After 10,000 movies, I'm starting to just find Leatherface annoying now. Go away, mate. You sit the fuck down! And shut up! Conceit of this film is, I guess, quite a good idea. It's, you know, set in this ghost town where, you know, it's time has passed by. And, and I guess setting a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film in a ghost town, I guess you'd believe that would create some of the claustrophobic tension of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974. No, 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 no. There's no tension in this. You don't feel like you're in a ghost town. And that's a massive problem with a film set in a ghost town. You have these annoying kids. Now, look, teenagers are always annoying in slasher films. They are. But now and again, you get some likable characters. Now and again, you get some you can tolerate. These characters are just badly written. You know, they're idealistic, annoying, modern, you know, and to my political um, persuasion, I'd probably be more on the liberal side. So even I am annoyed by these little liberals. And they're not good actors. They're not. And you get frustrated watching them. I didn't get caught up or rooting for any of these characters. I found them annoying. I found them preachy. I found them generic. You know, I just I just didn't get invested in any of these characters, and that's a concern. I know that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not known for its great characters, but you know what? The first film, you cared about the girl because you really sympathised with her eventually. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, you cared about Dennis Hopper, you cared about the other lady in Texas Chainsaw 2. There are characters sprinkled within the franchise that you care about. These little shits. I didn't care about them and I didn't ever care seeing them in peril because they couldn't convey it in their acting that I should care. They weren't very good at acting. I think a major problem is modern filmmakers who are bringing these franchises back don't understand what actually made them work. Same thing with Halloween, you know, obviously the Halloween fans all disagree with me because these are resounding successes. I don't like the new Halloween movies. I don't think they understand Michael Myers. I think they're having their cake and eating it. I think they've crapped all over the sequels and then said, we're not like that. But then they just do all the tropes of the sequels and then say they're not. And they just, they just like to say the right things. They say the right things. Oh, we're doing the real Michael. And people believe them, even though it's the same Michael from the sequels anyway. So they do that. And there's this arrogance behind it. There's this annoying thing of just, we're doing these franchises justice and you're really not you're pissing on their ashes more than they already have been these filmmakers do not understand leatherface the fear of leatherface was the randomness the bizarreness of the character the just in your face uncompromising mental illness of this character and the fact that he was embroiled and almost controlled by this family the family was horrifying they're missing in this one of the main fears of texas chainsaw was what a cult family can do you know obviously these these people are completely insane but they've convinced themselves this is normal life and they've brought up this leather face and really abused him and turned him into something beyond evil and that's the kind of fear of it that's the horror of it the kind of cult um brainwashing and the the idea that they live this life thinking it's normal absolutely none of that's here and all you have is leather face as a big lumbering fool Leatherface is just another slasher killer in this, but with a chainsaw. He is not memorable. The actor doesn't have any presence as Leatherface. He doesn't really jump off the screen. You know, you always got a thing with when you saw Leatherface. You're always, even in the worst of the sequels, you always got, wow, that's Leatherface. You know, it's like, oh God, what a scary bastard. Whereas in this, there's nothing scary about him in my opinion. I, I don't understand if the director couldn't shoot him. There's just many moments in this where you see Leatherface sat in his bedroom like some kind of sulky kid. Or there's scenes where Leatherface is just standing there looking like a fool, looking like a chump. There's no presence to Leatherface and that wasn't Leatherface anyway. The thing about Leatherface is you don't want to see him just standing there like a chump. You really want to see him sparingly. You really want to see him wielding a chainsaw, running, screaming, fleeting glimpses of this madman. Even the worst of the sequels got this right in some ways, you know, people like to have a go at Texas Chainsaw 2, he's still scary in that, he's still disturbing. That's what it is, disturbing. He's not disturbing in this, he's got no disturbing traits, he's just a killer who put, you know, he doesn't do anything scary, like he doesn't 
force characters to wear face skin masks like he does in Texas Chainsaw 2. That's horrifying. Or he doesn't, you know, try to start dancing with one round. That's really disturbing in, in Texas Chainsaw 2. I'm talking a lot, a lot about that because I actually rewatched it recently for the ranking and I, I quite enjoyed it. So there's a spoiler for my ranking, which I'll be doing. Leatherface has always been the bit of the black sheep because no one really cares about him. You have to get him right. And to keep bringing him back just as a generic slasher, you haven't got it right. I will say this movie has some kills going for it, this movie has some gore going for it, it does. It puts the massacre in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I know I wish I cared more, you know, when I was watching those scenes I was like, okay, some decent kills, some decent, um, you know, massacre moments. But, you know, embroiled in this weird characters being annoying, like that bus scene where I'm blown away that made it into a movie. That whole filming Leatherface on the camera. I'm blown away that got into a mainstream film. That's mind boggling to me. It's just an example of the filmmakers with this weird yearning to make everything modern, even if it's stupid, you know, even if it's stupid. So that scene would have been really good if he just got on the bus and just massacred this bus, but just that weird little thing there, which isn't needed. So the lady from the first film who survived Leatherface in the first movie comes back. Now, she was so pointless, man. She was so pointless. There's no need for her in this film. I don't get it. And, you know, and I feel like this was genuinely an attempt at the Laurie Strode. And I know people are saying, oh, it's cheap to just say it's Laurie Strode. But she has nothing to do. And you just put her in it as this strong female who's had a tortured past, who wants to get in with a killer, who's badass. That's Laurie Strode. That's, that comes exactly out of this new Laurie Strode bring her pack playbook. She's not in it much, and she's not a convincing actress, and she's not Jamie Lee Curtis. You know, so it's like, what? and it's just like, there's one moment where she points the gun at Leatherface and says, do you remember me? And Leatherface walks past as some kind of dismissive teenager. And she's like upset that he doesn't remember her. That's Michael Myers and Jamie Lee from this new franchise. Don't tell me it's not. And also it doesn't work in this. Why would she care if Leatherface remembered her? Of course he's not gonna remember. His fucking brains are like scrambled eggs, love. You sit the fuck down. Mildly entertaining chases is all I can say. Mildly entertaining moments, but nothing scary, you know. Talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. That is kind of doing this well. It but it's still disturbing. So, the, you know, there are ways to not have to be that first movie and still make it work. That can please me. You know, like the Texas Chainsaw rem remake is very good. This just is generic. It's a generic slasher film. There's nothing even that extravagant of a direction either. Leatherface is an old sod. He should be getting the walking stick out with Michael Myers. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? That's Michael and Leatherface. And Jason and Freddy as well. They'll be 70 odd. The old gang. You know, the grumpy old man. What do you guys think of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 movie? I am going to be doing a ranking of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise very, very soon. Um, so stay tuned for that. Please subscribe if you're a movie geek just like me. Tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me what you think of this new Leatherface. He's shit, isn't he? Thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you guys in the next video.